Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Senator, good to see you. Thanks for being here. I understand you're not a, you're not a fan of the tax bill. Uh, you don't like the large corporate tax cut, and you're not happy with the tax cuts for the wealthy. But according to the Tax Policy Center, next year, 91% of middle-income Americans will receive a tax cut. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, it is a very good thing. And that's why we should have made the tax breaks for the middle class permanent. But what the Republicans did is made the tax breaks for corporations permanent, the tax breaks for the middle class temporary, and according to the Tax Policy Center, that same organization, at the end of 10 years, 83% of the benefits go to the top 1%, 60% of the benefits go to the top one-tenth of 1%. Meanwhile, at the end of 10 years, well over 80 million Americans will be paying more in taxes, 13 million Americans, as a result of this legislation, are going to lose their health insurance. Health care premiums are going up. We got a $1.4 trillion deficit as a result of this bill. And Paul Ryan is going around saying, oh, we have to offset that deficit by cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. To answer your questions, should we have focused on the needs of the middle class? We should have. But the bulk of the benefits in this legislation go to large, profitable corporations and to millionaires and billionaires. Well, let's talk about the, the corporate tax cut, because in the hours after the bill passed, major corporations such as AT&T and Comcast promised $1,000 bonuses for their workers, while companies like Wells Fargo and Fifth Third Bank Corp hike their company-wide minimum wage wages to $15 an hour. Um, and Republicans say this is evidence that the tax cut is working, not just for corporations, but for their employees. Well, there are other corporations, by the way, who are involved now in corporate buybacks. Uh, where dividends are going to go up for the CEOs of the largest corporations. Uh, nobody denies that we have right now a tax system in which one out of five major profitable corporations pay zero in taxes. This legislation makes a bad situation worse, and it drives up the deficit. Many large corporations are going to use their tax breaks to make CEOs wealthier and do very little for workers. Another provision of this bill that was very interesting had to do uh, with the elimination, uh, the repealing of the individual mandate in Obamacare requiring individuals to buy health insurance. Take a listen to what President Trump had to say about this. Obamacare has been repealed in this bill. We didn't want to bring it up. I told people specifically, be quiet with the fake news media because I don't want them talking too much about it because I didn't know how people would. But now that it's approved, I can say the individual mandate on health care where you had to pay not to have insurance. OK, think of that one. You pay not to have insurance. The individual mandate has been repealed. Your response? That a president celebrates the fact that 13 million Americans will lose their health insurance. Well, willingly. They'll, they, they will, yeah. They will. Jake, we are the only major country on Earth not to guarantee health care to all people. As a result of the repeal of the individual mandate, 13 million people will lose their health insurance. Now, some of these young people who are healthy today, you know what? They can get hit by a bus tomorrow. They could be diagnosed with leukemia the next day. Who do you think is now going to pay the bill as a result of the repeal of the individual mandate? You are, I am, and every American who has health insurance. Instead of bragging about more Americans without health insurance, we should join every other major country on Earth guarantee health care to all people, and end the absurdity of paying twice as much per capita for health care as any other major nation. Sources tell CNN that the White House and Republican leadership uh, plan to meet in January to discuss their legislative priorities, and one of them is welfare reform. Republicans think they can get some Democrats on board with welfare reform by funding job training programs for people who have been unemployed for long periods of time. Is that theoretically something you might be willing to listen well, to? Well, I don't know exactly what welfare reform means. Uh, if welfare reform means, as Paul Ryan is talking about, cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, no, I'm not going to listen to that. If welfare reform means improving child care for working families so moms now have the opportunity to go out and work and know that their kids are in safe and secure child care facilities, that's something we can listen to. Right now in this country, there are many, many jobs not being filled because workers don't have the training in order to go out and get those jobs. If the Trump administration wants to address that issue, I'm sure he's going to have cooperation. Right now, we've got hundreds of thousands of bright young people who cannot afford to go to college because the cost of college is so high. 
Most of the new jobs require a higher education. If the Trump administration wants to work with us on that, I think we can make some progress. We can create up to 15 million decent paying jobs by rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. Roads, bridges, water system, wastewater plants, airports. Trump administration wants to work with us on that. I think we can make some progress as well. Take a look at something Republican Senator Jeff Flake tweeted after the Senate passed the final tax bill. He wrote, um, bipartisan DACA bill will be on the Senate floor uh, in January. That's a reference to the bill um, that would uh, allow people who are in this country illegally but were brought here when they were children by their parents to stay here to have some sort of legal status. Um, is, uh, is a DACA fix going to be good enough or do these people in your view need to have permanent it's, citizenship? That's much too vague a statement. Yeah. Let's look at what's going on. We got 800,000 young people, often really bright, wonderful young people. They're in school, they're working, are there in the United States military. As a result of, of Trump's effort or successful effort to repeal DACA, uh, their legal status is now in doubt. And every single day, every single day, people, you know, these young people, these dreamers are losing their legal status. If we do not act, you're gonna have 800,000 people with no legal status who will be subject to deportation, thrown out of the only country they have ever known. This is a moral outrage. And by the way, this is not just Bernie Sanders talking. A recent Quinnipiac poll came out. You may have seen it. 77% of the American people, overwhelmingly, Democrats, Republicans, independents, say that we have got to protect the legal status of these young people and that we have to move them toward citizenship. This is widely popular. That's what the American people want. Even people like Charles Koch, who funds the Republican Party, believes in this that the Republicans have been so busy trying to give tax breaks to billionaires and ignoring this crisis is a very, very sad state of affairs. So to answer your question, we need absolutely to protect the dreamers and pass that legislation. I have many more questions for you. Stick around, Senator, if you will, uh, including Sanders uh, of Vermont. Uh, Senator, in the wake of Senator Franken's resignation, you and many Democratic senators have been calling for President Trump to resign. Uh, due to his own sexual harassment and assault accusations. Take a listen to what two other Democrats uh, have to say about this issue, though. Those allegations were made uh, before the election. Uh, and so people had an opportunity to judge before that election. Uh, I think we need to move on and not get distracted by those issues. So yes to an investigation then, for the president or no? You've moved on. I've moved on. I really have moved on. Senator-elect Doug Jones and Senator Manchin say that, that they've moved on and, and they don't think this is a worthwhile but, spend, spending yeah, time. Of course, that is not the issue we're going to focus on. That was a question that I was asked by the media and I responded. And the response was that if Al Franken felt that he acted inappropriately, you have a president who was on television in a widely seen tape boasting about his assault of women. If Franken could resign, I think it would be appropriate for the president to do the same. Some senators uh, say that they regret pushing for Al Franken to resign, that he's accused, that what he's accused of uh, might be awful but not worth ending his Senate uh, career. Do you have any regrets? Look, Al Franken indicated that he was going to resign. And I think what Franken did touches on an issue of enormous consequence for this country. And what I, worried, what I worry about, Jake, is not just what happens with regard to famous people. We see that in the papers every day, whether it's in the media, the corporate world, or in politics. Right now, as we speak, uh, in restaurants all over this uh, country, in offices all over this country, there are folks who are not famous, who are harassing women, making demands on women that are obscene. And we need a revolution in the way we treat women at the workforce from the bottom on up. I want to ask you about the Russia investigation. Take a listen to what uh, your colleague, the top Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, Mark Warner of Virginia, said about the special counsel investigation. Any attempt by this president to remove special counsel Mueller from his position or to pardon key witnesses in any effort to shield them for a, from accountability or shut down the investigation would be a gross abuse of power. These truly are red lines and simply cannot allow them to be crossed. After Warner's comments on the floor of the Senate, a White House lawyer said, quote, there is no consideration uh, of the president uh, setting into motion the firing of Mueller. Uh, but we have heard uh, 
an, an increasingly loud chorus of President Trump's supporters in Congress uh, and the media uh, attacking Mueller, uh, calling his integrity into question, saying that the president should fire uh, Mueller. How concerned are you that President Trump might actually take this action? I'm very concerned. Look, what Mueller was asked to do, and by the way, before this investigation, as you recall, Mueller had widespread support all across the political spe spectrum for the very fine work he did as FBI director. What he was asked to do was to deal with a very serious issue. Did the Trump administration collude with the Russians in the campaign? Very important issue. That is what he is trying to do. And to ta attack his integrity in order to protect the president is unacceptable. Furthermore, it is equally unacceptable for the president or any of his advisors to be thinking about granting pardons to those people who have pled guilty. If he did, if he fired Mueller or set into motion the process to fire Mueller, if he pardoned Flynn or Papadopoulos or Manafort, um, what steps would you be willing to take as a United States senator? I think, to say the least, it would be provoking a constitutional crisis. A constitutional crisis. I believe so. Um, I want to ask you how you view the election of your newest colleague, Senator-elect uh, Doug Jones. Do you think that this is part of, of a blue wave, or is this just a, a one-off because of the horrific allegations against Roy Moore? Well, of course, Moore, Moore was not a strong candidate. That goes without saying. But if you look at this election, if you look at the election of November Seventh, what you're seeing all across this people, all across this country, are people catching on to the fact that Donald Trump ran for president, saying that he was going to defend the interests of the working class and middle class, and it turned out he lied. Uh, you have a president who told us that he was going to provide health care to everybody, then he proposed 30 million people being thrown off of health insurance. His tax plan was going to benefit the middle class. The bulk of the benefits go to the rich and large corporations. He was going to take on the drug companies, and then he appoints the guy to head the Health and Human Services Agency who comes from the drug companies, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what you are seeing is a referendum on Donald Trump about a man who said one thing during the campaign and his actions are very, very diff different. He wanted to drain the swamp. Well, it looks like the swamp now has more billionaires in his administration than any president in American history. So I think the, what we're seeing in Alabama, uh, what we're seeing in Virginia, New Jersey, and in states all across this country are large voter turnouts, where people standing up and fighting back and demanding that we have a government that represents all of us, not just the 1%. If I were the Republicans, I would worry very much about 2018. Senator Sanders, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy New Year, best wishes to you in 2018. Best to you and your family. Always a pleasure to have you here.